everybody. How are you? So good to see all of you here this evening. Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2019 International Convention and Competition in New Orleans, Louisiana. And you are the first, you're the hardcore here right at the beginning. It is my honor to present our annual State of the Organization to you today. But before we begin, I would like to share a bit of musical history with you. Now I imagine most of you know Mr. David Wright. He's a wonderful arranger of barbershop music and of course the husband of our beautiful queen, Sandy Wright. What you may not know is that David is also a barbershop historian, and he has been so kind to share with me some very fascinating research on the impact of barbershop on the development of American jazz music. Now David says, and I quote, it is a well-known fact that the early greats of New Orleans jazz, including Louis Armstrong, Buddy Bolden, and Jelly Roll Morton, sang in barbershop quartets prior to picking up their instruments. Recent research by British jazz historian Vic Hobson shows convincingly that their barbershop harmonizing influenced their playing and in fact played a seminal role in the beginning of jazz in New Orleans. So how about that? Guess what else? All of that influence in a barbershop on these men happened very near to where we are tonight and to our convention hotels. We are standing on barbershop hallowed ground. Yes, where barbershop most likely made its greatest mark on American music. And I think there's a slide up on the jumbotron right now that shows a map, and I hope it's big enough for you to see, but there's a little arrow on there that points to where uh, Louis Armstrong was born. And the main street, the dark gray street going down the middle there uh, is Canal Street. And so you can see he was born very near Canal Street and our convention hotels are just a couple blocks there from the, uh, the, the river. So we have always known that the music that we love to sing is pretty darn special. And here's further confirmation. Many thanks to David for sharing this interesting history with all of us tonight. Thank you, David. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure at this time to introduce to you your 2019 International Board of Directors. All right, now, we have a tradition that they, each board member gets three claps. And then at the end, we give them their rousing, much-deserved rounds of applause. Um, can I count on you to do the three claps? All right, let's practice. Let's practice. Okay. On three, not after three. On three, I want you to practice. Clap, clap, clap. All right, ready? One, two, three. You are good. You are good. You are so ready. Okay. Please help me welcome Sharon Cartwright. That's awesome. There she is. Leslie Galbraith. All right, now, now get it together. I think we're, some are a little faster. That's the tempo, all right. Jenny Harris. Oh, see how good you are. Yay, Jenny. Cammy McKinley. Very good. Janice McKenna. Renee Porzell. You can hoot, you can hoot and holler, yeah. <laughs> Mary Ray. Yeah. International Secretary, Trace Antonini. International Treasurer, J.D. Crow, Immediate Past President, Paula Davis, and President-Elect, Joan Boudelier. And I am Patty Cobb Baker, your International President. Please give these hardworking women a rousing, much-deserved, and enthusiastic round of applause. Your Sweet Adeline's International Board of Directors. Thank you so much, ladies. All right. You can, you can hoot and holler even more if you want. 
They work so hard on your behalf, if you only knew. All right, well, this evening, as I begin this address to you, I would like to spend a little time and honor two very special women who came before me as president of Sweet Adelines International and whom we lost this year. Norma Moore served as our international president from 1973 to 1974, and she was a longtime, much beloved member of Region 19 and the Dundalk Chorus. Kathy Carmody, whom we just lost last month, served from 1997 to 1998 and again from 1999 to 2000. Kathy was the 2011 Lifetime Achievement Award winner. She was a certified international master faculty and the always exuberant director of the Velvet Hills Chorus. Both of these remarkable women say, served from their heart and contributed enormously to the growth and development of our organization. So it is with a heavy heart that we say goodbye to these two iconic Sweet Adelines, and we thank them for all they gave of themselves to all of us. Thank you. Now, if you were here last year, you will recall that in that state of the organization address, I talked with all of you about where Sweet Adelines is in the typical life cycle of organizations. It was fascinating. If you missed it, it's on YouTube. You should just check it out. <laughs> I spoke about the big external shifts that are happening in society today and also in the barbershop marketplace that can impact how we do business. And that because we're an exceptional nonprofit with almost 75 years of existence, there really is a greater need for an emphasis on organizational transformation. And you know how transformation works. So I described a lot of strategies and activities that were taking place in support of organizational change and renewal, and how it really is a very exciting time for us. It's there's a lot of fresh energy and creativity and growth happening right now. Um, transformation is nothing new to Sweet Adelines. When you're 74 years old as an organization, you've evolved a lot and will always be evolving and improving. So this year, I want to talk with you about all the things that have been going on during this last year to continue our evolution. And these, I think, are activities that have established a foundation and a direction for our next five years as Sweet Adelines. The result of these efforts are a new vision statement and guiding principles. And you can think of guiding principles as our values, our value set, and an updated mission statement and strategic plan. So our work began last November at the visioning retreat. Now, the purpose of that retreat was to create a fresh, clear, and compelling shared vision for Sweet Adelines and to outline potential priorities for our future strategic direction. The International Board, along with 25 other Sweet Adelines members and our International Headquarters team, leadership team, spent two days together exploring our organizational identity, our organizational intent, and whatever desired outcomes we felt we needed for now and for our future. We had a wide variety of perspectives and skills and demographics and experience represented at that retreat that took place in Tulsa. Since the retreat, the Board of Directors has finalized the wording of the vision statement and the guiding principles, and we shared them with the visioning retreat participants, our RMTs, and all of you. And we created an updated organizational mission statement and developed a new five-year strategic plan that was driven entirely by that new vision and guiding principles. We're currently in the process of creating action plans now to implement our strategic initiatives. So I want to talk with you tonight about each of our new defining statements and what they mean to us as an organization and to you as a member. So let's first address our new vision statement, mission statement, and guiding principles. These are statements of intention and promise. 
They tell the world who we are, what our essential purpose is, and what we value most in that purpose and in our relationship with others. They are words that are both defining, but they're also aspirational. And they are words that say, we promise to do this and mean it. Well, that's why it took all of those people at the retreat and seven more months of work to craft them, because these words are not words that were written to just check off a box that says every organization needs to have these. They were created to communicate who we are in this, the 21st century, and then to remind us and to reinforce for us those things that truly matter most to us, words that we should live by and that make us uniquely and perfectly Sweet Adelines International. So as such, these are very, very important statements, and I hope that you will all take them to heart and bring them into your own personal and ensemble experiences. So here's our new, or let's say updated, mission statement, and it reads, elevating women singers worldwide through education, performance, and competition in barbershop harmony and a cappella music. Thank you. Thank you. There. Yes. Thank you, Mom. Mom's out there clapping. So you're going to see a theme running through all of these statements that emphasizes the uplifting and enriching qualities of Sweet, the Sweet Adeline's experience. We thought that the word elevating perfectly captured the part of our mission that isn't as obvious to the casual observer as the fact that we are a singing organization. We want the world to know that Sweet Adelines is a place to find inspiration, improvement, encouragement, and support, all through our beautiful barbershop harmonies. And you will note that we also added to the statement through a cappella music. The addition of the words a cappella music highlights that we don't limit our singing choices only to barbershop music, but to all styles of a cappella singing. So that's, that's right. So that's our, our updated mission statement. Next, I want to share with you our new vision statement. And it says, inspiring and empowering voices to joyfully harmonize the world. So, yes, thank you. Yeah. It's a pretty simple statement, isn't it? But it's, it's got a lot, a lot of power in it as well. I think all of us know countless stories of members who have found their voice, both, both in their life and in song, through Sweet Adelines. You see that theme again in this new vision statement. These are two emotion-evoking words, inspiring and empowering, that speak of our aspirations to not only inspire and empower every member, create joy and spread that joy as far as our voices can reach. Our vision is to offer this experience to as many singers as we can all over the world. So that is our new vision statement. Now we have five guiding principles or overarching values for Sweet Adelines International, and they encompass the following focal areas. Musical excellence, a culture of belonging, diversity and inclusion, personal empowerment and leadership, and outreach. Now these principles were all developed by looking at information we gathered from you. The April 2017 member survey, international, excuse me, internal focus groups, RMT input, all of this communication, even just emails that you guys send us that we keep and c collect in a database, all of this communication helped us hone in on what really matters to you, the Sweet Adelines member. So we're going to look at each one of them individually. The guiding principle of musical excellence says, we honor and embrace artistry, education, and innovation in the performance of women's a cappella music while championing, championing the barbershop style. That's not easy to say. Championing. Our first guiding principle states that we believe in musical excellence. 
We are an educational organization with a culture of learning as a lifestyle. Now this creates ever improving and evolving a cappella singing performances. We believe in musical art and we appreciate and enjoy all styles of a cappella singing and performance while recognizing at the same time and promoting the barbershop style that enables us to become expert a cappella singers. So that is the guiding principle of musical excellence. Very good. I figured you guys would buy into that. This next guiding principle is a culture of belonging. And it says, we create harmony where every voice matters. We foster a culture that provides a joyful place to share our uniqueness within a global community united in song. Thank you. That's a good one. I, I really like this one. We often hear Sweet Adeline say, okay, I like all of them, but I really like this one. We often hear Sweet Adeline say, I came for the music and stayed for the friends, friendships. How many of you said that? That was so, it's just part of who we are, right? Well, this guiding principle expresses that experience for us. We believe in creating and upholding a culture in all of our quartets, choruses, regions, and in the organization at large that says you matter and you belong. A culture that allows you to be you and in which we are all celebrated for the unique people we are and the talents we have to offer. We believe music and the act of communal singing is the gateway to this culture of joy and growth and has the power to truly unite and change the world. And so that is that guiding principle. The third guiding principle is diversity and inclusion. And it says, we celebrate our differences as essential to the rich harmony that unites us. As we recognize barbershops, African-American origins, and learn from our exclusionary past toward women of color, we reject discrimination and unwaveringly strive toward greater awareness, openness, and understanding of each other. <laughs> this guiding principle acknowledges the cultural appropriation that is part of Barbershop's music history, and it is a strong and powerful rejection of our organization's exclusionary past. We know that harmony is created through the combination of different yet indispensable elements, both the musical tones and the singers who produce them. And we believe it is only through an unceasing quest to understand and be open to each other's unique voice and experience that we can make the most beautiful music and a better world. Our next guiding principle is that of personal empowerment and leadership. And it says, we encourage and empower everyone to lead from where they stand. That means everyone. We foster individual skills, nurture personal growth, and we provide education and mentoring to develop strong, effective leaders on and off the stage. In Sweet Adeline's, everyone, every member is a leader. This guiding principle speaks to our belief that every member must be given an opportunity to grow and contribute their personal strengths, both musically and personally. We firmly believe that individual growth leads not only to personal fulfillment, but also to organizational growth, strength, and stability. And our last guiding principle is that of outreach, and it says, we build strong connections by sharing our love of barbershop harmony throughout our communities, countries, and the world. This guiding principle affirms the importance of reaching out with our music to our communities and to the world. It is grounded in the belief that our music builds powerful connections and has significant value to those it touches. Not only can we change and enrich our own lives with our music, but we can do the same for the lives of those in our listening audiences, and they are out there ready for us to give it to them. 
So those are our defining guiding principles, our vision statement, and our mission statement. And now, with these as our guides, the International Board and the Headquarters Leadership Team went to work updating our strategic plan. And we believe that the strategic plan, again, is not just something that you write and put up on a shelf and say, we did it. We believe it's a living and breathing document that is truly the roadmap to our vision. So again, working with our visioning retreat facilitator, two days of last June's board meeting were spent in a great deal of discussion and collaborative dialogue. The board determinedly aligned our top organizational goals with our guiding principles because those principles are a compelling expression of our desired state, who we want to be, who we are as an organization. These goals and their accompanying objectives will drive all of our efforts over the next five years. Now here are the, uh, f the four focal goal areas. And you're gonna see how they, in a lot of ways, look a lot like our, our guiding principles. They are embracing others, musical excellence, facing forward, and individual and organizational growth. So we're gonna dive into the strategic plan now, so stay with me, okay? I hope that you haven't been down to Bourbon Street right before you came here. Because it's, it's a lot of words, but they're important words to all of us. And they're important because for Sweet Adelines International to move into the vision of our future, we've all got to fly information in how we operate from the individual member all the way to the international board and, and our headquarters staff. So we're going to take them one by one. Here's our goal, our written goal for embracing others. It says, every singer will be committed to creating, fostering, and celebrating a culture of belonging every singer. And there are four objectives for this goal. So these are the objectives from which strategic action plans will be developed. The first one says, define the indicators of a culture of belonging and develop educational materials to equip all singers and directors to foster this culture. Number two, provide creative membership options outside of the current traditional models. And we've already started some work in this area that we're, we're investigating. Number three, increase worldwide participation and engagement in our programs, events, and leadership. Number four, provide educational and organizational material that are readily accessible and in multiple languages. So those are our four goals associated with embracing others. Now, though all of the goals are uh, synergistic and they might overlap a little bit, this goal and its objectives are essentially about membership development, retention, and growth, and they include promoting a more diverse and inclusive membership. I am delighted to reveal to you right now that out of this goal, a very exciting new membership growth initiative is in development. Now this campaign is gonna be announced early in 2020. We have a task force that's hard at work on this right now. But we thought 2020 in January, our 75th anniversary year was the perfect time to introduce it. So stand by for more information on this membership initiative. Now you'll note that the first two objectives on this chart are in bold font, and that is because they are prioritized for the most immediate implementation. And that will be true on the following charts as well, so, so look for those. All right, here's our goal for musical excellence. It is we will provide innovative learning experiences and initiatives leading to creative and exceptional performances. And there are five objectives for this goal. Number one is to provide co comprehensive and current educational content via ongoing microburst and online learning platforms. That's gonna be Sweet Adeline's University. That's what we're gonna have. Number two, offer creative learning experiences in the barbershop art form, as well as other musical styles and theatrical competencies. No, that's right, we're gonna be, be stretching and growing. 
Number three, develop alternative contest and festival opportunities which serve the needs of performing groups of all sizes and cultures while promoting outreach. Number four, develop a director continuous improvement program which offers innovative content and teaching methods to enhance the singer experience and inspire creative musical, musical growth. And number five, incentivize composers and arrangers of Women's Barbershop to create new contest arrangements and songs for all levels and ages of singers. And, and you know, we began, we had a little experiment in that last year with our songwriting contest, and we're looking uh, into different ways to continue to do that kind of a thing. So this goal and its objectives are about enhancing our education in all of its forms, be it the education you get at your course rehearsal each week or at your regional and international events, or education through competition and performance. So that last objective is actually one, as I said, that was initiated last year. And I know that you are all going to be very excited to hear Class Ring, our current um, international champion quartet, debut the winning arrangement by Joe Lyles this Saturday during the chorus final, so don't miss that. Now you'll see, you'll see that numbers three and four in this goal are identified as our top priority objectives. All right, our next goal is called Facing Forward, and it says we will align our brand promise public perception, and singer experience to affirm the joyful, vibrant, life-changing global community that we are. And there are five objectives for this goal. Number one says, ensure the organizational name is relatable and engenders pride. Number two, spotlight and share meaningful, personal Sweet Adeline stories and experiences. Number three, recognize that our culture is our brand and work to ensure it is experienced at every touch point throughout the organization. Number four, contribute to creating harmony by sharing our voices in our communities. And number five, identify and recognize the innovators, change agents, ambassadors, and thought leaders who are living our vision and our guiding principles. So this goal and its objectives are about the face that we present to the world and ensuring that it represents who the modern Sweet Adeline is. So this goal encompasses all of our marketing and our PR efforts, and again, it includes an emphasis on building an organizational culture that enriches our members' lives and ensures a strong and harmonious community of singers. Now, our Life on a High Note campaign that was launched last year is a key component in the development of additional action plans for this goal. And I hope you've had a chance to visit our marketing center on the Sweet Adeline's website to, to use and just to see some of these fantastic new materials. Um, they're quite uh, contemporary and beautiful and um, say a lot of wonderful things that I think we want the world to know. And then lastly, the goal for individual and organizational growth says, we will model a culture of purposeful connection that supports engagement and opportunities for growth. And there are four objectives for this goal. Number one, develop programs to provide learning opportunities which nurture strong, effective, and inspiring leaders at all levels of the organization. Number two, ensure our organizational structure and governance align with effective and successful practices. Number three, assess philanthropic opportunities that will enable us to advance the mission of our organization. And number four, strengthen communication throughout the Sweet Adeline's community. This goal and its objectives are about our organizational infrastructure. And you will note that objective number one is identified as the top priority in this goal. This goal realizes that our most important organizational asset is our membership, and that investing in the personal growth of our members by creating ladders for personal development is a very wise investment, and it's a core value. 
This goal also emphasizes strong business practices and governance as essential to fulfilling our mission and realizing our vision. One business practice in which we are making significant strides this year is addressed in objective number three. Our new director of philanthropy, Susan Smith, is hard at work assessing our philanthropic opportunities and creating action plans for non-dues fundraising. One fundraising mechanism, yes, non-dues. We want to keep them as low as we can. One fundraising mechanism that you will note throughout this com convention is the tax to give opportunity. And I hope you will feel inspired to use it to help support all of our wonderful programs. Uh, this next slide, in fact, shows all the ways that you can contribute to Sweet Alliance International through this coming week. Lots of them. And there's going to be, like, there's, there'll be a bucket. It, it, that's the fun way, you know, toss money in a bucket at the end of the uh, week as well. So, as a reminder, all of your donations to our Life on a High Note campaign support our Young Women in Harmony program, our Young Singers Foundation, grants and scholarships, and our Overtone Society programs. So, that in a very big nutshell, is our strategic plan for the next five years. So our, our headquarters staff, like I said, is busily developing action plans and budgets and performance metrics so that we can implement and monitor this plan. And we are all really excited because we can see our future. We can see our future in this plan. So, Please know that the international leadership will be reaching out to you through surveys and other means to continue to include your voice and your input into any programmatic and policy decisions. Stay tuned, there's much more to come. Now, I hope these statements of purpose and promise and principle and our strategic plan, which will ultimately yield a significant suite of new programs and services for our members, renews your pride in who you are as a sweet Adeline and who we all are and can be together. Truly, everything that you do as a proud singer creates the vision we as an organization have for the future of the mu music that we love. I want to thank you for your kind attention this evening and I want to wish everyone a week filled with joy, fun, and grand harmony. To all of this week's competitors, break a lip. May you be elevated by all of the magical musical experiences the week has in store for you. And may they fill your heart and your soul with beautiful memories to last your lifetime. And now, as they say here in Nolens, Louisiana, let the good times roll. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.